How's it going, guys? We have a past level question for internal medicine slash optile for 2CK. A nearly identical one shows up on one of the 2CK clinical mastery series forms. If you're studying for step one, obviously this is fair game. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M E H L M A N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. 61 year old woman. She has hypertension, type 2 diabetes mellitus. She has a three hour history of loss of vision in her right eye. Optile exam shows a cholesterol embolus in the right renal artery question just wants to know the most likely cause now hopping right out of the gates cutting to the fucking chase you need to know for usmla that if you get a stroke a tia or a retinal artery occlusion that is going to be due to either a left atrial mural thrombus that's launched off in the sitting of atrial fibrillation or you have a cholesterol plaque that's launched off in the setting of carotid atherosclerosis if the patient has hypertension, answer equals carotid atherosclerosis. You're going to do carotid duplex ultrasonography as the next best step in management. Greater than 80% occlusion, answer equals endarterectomy. Under 80% occlusion, medical management only, which is going to be antiplatelet therapy, usually just aspirin. That's okay. It's a long discussion. So aspirin plus a statin plus lisinopril for the blood pressure management. If no hypertension, we do a regular ECG looking for atrial fibrillation. If ECG shows no abnormalities, we do a 24 hour ECG monitor, a Holter monitor to look for paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation, usually paroxysmal. Patient goes home, has dinner, switches in the AFib for a half an hour, switches out of it. So in this case, hypertension, and they explicate that there's a cholesterol embolus here. As I said, it's past level. Embolus is something that travels, thrombus does not travel. So cholesterol has literally traveled to the eye in the setting of hypertension. This is carotid plaque, okay? Carotid atherosclerosis. We do carotid duplex ultrasound. So choice A is the correct answer. And then choice D, left atrial mural thrombus, atrial fibrillation, wrong answer. If patient did not have hypertension, usually older, generally 70s or older, that's more likely to be atrial fibrillation. So let's just hop real quick through the other answer choices here. Uh, diabetic and hypertensive retinopathies, wrong answer. You should know that in both of these, you can see hemorrhages on the fundoscopy. You don't have to be a fucking ophthalmologist, okay? I'm just going to tell you some buzzy things. You can see hemorrhages. You can see cotton wool spots, also known as soft exudates, which are accumulations of axonoplasmic material due to nerve degeneration. You can see hard exudates, which are due to a leaky retinal blood barrier where we get proinaceous accumulations, fibrinogen, albumin, okay? Once again, don't have to be a fucking ophthalmologist. I'm just telling you some buzzy things to memorize. And then hypertensive retinopathy, an added finding you could be aware of is something called AV nicking, okay? Just memorize it. AV nicking is if you hear that or see that in a vignette, that just refers to hypertensive retinopathy. Diabetic retinopathy, you should be thinking, okay, that's the one where there's uh, increased proclivity for neovascularization in particular, okay? Wrong fucking answers. And then optic neuritis, this is very buzzy for multiple sclerosis. Okay, long discussion, but this is just inflammation of cranial nerve 2. And this can present in a myriad of ways, central scotoma, loss of color vision, loss of visual acuity, just in a patient who has MS, women 20s to 30s generally, lengthy discussion. So your take home here is that if you have stroke, TIA, or retinal artery occlusion, if patient has hypertension, carotid stenosis, if patient does not have hypertension, atrial fibrillation. You know the deal, I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.